Welcome to the Big Picture Show with your host, Josh Tickell. We are the new media, so don't forget to like and share this podcast. All right. Welcome, fans. Welcome, Facebook fans, to the Big Picture Show with your host, Josh Tickell. Here live in the studio today, I have Ray Archuleta, one of the soil, kind of soil leaders in the soil movement. Ray, you've, you've, you've previously worked for the NRCS, which is the Natural Resources Conservation Service, yep. mm -hmm. for over 30 years. And now, you're on your own, you're independent, you are... You're with a group of guys, and you guys have a soil academy. Mm -hmm. You are teaching people how to rehabilitate the soils of the world, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. specifically America to start with, right? Yes. And then, and then we're going to move to the world, let's hope, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Josh, I, I just retired about three months ago, so yes. And your voice is a little hoarse. You've just done a three-day intensive course yes yes teaching yes. teaching how many people in w w in elk city oklahoma <laughs> yes is that correct right in the center of the dust bowl right. yeah we had uh, 30 people 30 people come from we had six people come from uh mexico we came all the way from mexico we had people from all over the country it was it was wonderful now what what is you know we were at a restaurant in Elk City, and obviously a, a group of filmmakers here, a group of, of people documenting your soil workshop. The waitress comes up, and she looks at us, and she goes, you guys don't look like you're from around here. <laughs> what are you doing in Elk City? I said, well, we're taking a soil workshop. And she said, well, I grew up on a farm, so you're measuring the, you're measuring the alkalinity of the soils? <laughs> I said, well, it's a little more complicated than that. By the time we got to Detritosphere, she just walked away. <laughs> she just left the table. She just went. I don't even know where she went. What, what, what's the crux of what you're teaching people? Why, why is this information so important to the future, not just of our food, but of our planet and of the future of, of human civilization itself? I think the center part, Josh, is... We're teaching people that the soil's alive. It's alive. It's a, just as alive as you and I. I think what's happening in years and years of agriculture or the way I grew up, I thought the soil was just something to hold the plant up. And so this revolution of mind and heart is teaching people how to love the soil. And the more they understand it, the more they uh, 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 cultivate it in a sense of... of doing more cover crops and no-till and, and managing their chemical and biological disturbances, they're, we're having farmers have a new relationship with the, their farm. Yeah. yeah it's new, exciting. Yeah. And, you know, I'd love to hear from folks at home what their, what their questions are. Uh, Sam, maybe you could, you could log on and just get us a screen of the questions as we go. So you're, you're mostly talking to farmers. And, and, and are you changing the paradigm? I mean, the traditional paradigm, we have 915 production, 950 million production acres of agriculture in the U.S. Mm -hmm. About a third is dedicated to row crops. The other two-thirds is rangeland. Yeah. Okay? So you've got a group of people who really, they're used to farming a very specific way. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of overturning their mentality. How, how does that usually go for them? Because you, <laughs> you're kind of telling them they've been doing it the wrong way, aren't you? I, I do it in a way that we use these cool soil demonstrations. I always start off with a story, Josh, and I draw them in. And then I show them how the soil works. And it's amazing, it, it, whether it's ranchers, farmers, gardeners. I've had people that don't even farm. They come up to me and say, after they hear the soil health talk, they go, oh, my gosh, I want to farm. You got me so excited about the soil. What it is is a, a change of heart to mind, a new lens, a new paradigm. And this, I call it biomimicry, yeah. how to mimic nature, how to emulate it. That's what we're teaching people, how to have relationship with it. Yeah. And, and it's changing, not only changing the way they look at it, but it's saving the farm and the ranch. And that is absolutely cool. 
that they are. I've had an old farmer one time say, Ray, I love to farm now because he understands how the soil works. Yes. And that's exciting. Yes. So that, so it's more than just that. It's, it's connecting with them. It's giving them the right filters, the way, the correct way of looking at the soil. So it changes their life and it changes my life. Now, tomorrow, you and I are going to do the some of the final interviews for the Kiss the Ground movie, yes. which, which I know a lot of people, they're excited. They want to know when it's coming out. We have to finish the movie first, folks. Just wait. Just wait. It's almost <laughs> done. But, the, you know, I will give away an important piece of the movie, which is this is almost three years since the point that I met you in first yeah. interview. It's been three years. Now, I have a little more gray hair. <laughs> so do I. Um, or did you, I always have gray hair? Yeah, you, you, you had some gray hair when we started this. <laughs> now, you know, when we met the first time, we were in a barn in Kansas, and you were working for the U.S. government. Yes. So I'm going to give away to the people who are listening on the podcast and listening live on Facebook today the fact that there's going to be a cut three years later. Mm -hmm. Now here's Ray Archuleta today. Yes. The modern Ray. Yes. Right? What changed? Why? Why no more? Why no more Ray Archuleta as a member of the U.S. government? Because you were you were out proselytizing soil health back then, under the USDA banner. Yeah, yeah. I first I want to say that uh, I could never be who I am without the USDA. I think it was the conduit that helped me spread the word of soil health. Um, but I was getting ready to retire, and I was getting frustrated the last three years, and I realized how slow the change of government is. And so um, I left early because I was getting frustrated. Yeah. I think I wanted a revolution, and I still want that. Yeah. And I began to realize, Josh, this movement doesn't come from the government. It comes from the bottom up. If you ever think, you ever see anything that's really changed the world, mm. the gospel started from 12 men, um, Gandhi, one person, they started from the people and then the people created this revolution that changed their world and their lives. Hey, the Beatles. The Beatles, my you know, gosh, four guys. How many of them were there? Yeah, yeah four, four, right? four guys. And this is the same way. Yeah. It's farmers and ranchers are driving this. Yeah. And what started this movement? Failure. Yeah. We were failing. I was failing as a agronomist, as a soil scientist. Mm. Farmers were going broke still. We weren't cleaning the water. Yeah. We've spent billions and billions of dollars. And it's still the number one water quality problem in this country is still sediment. Sediment, for those of you who are listening, sediment is dirt. Yeah. Right? It's soiled it's, out of its context. It's, it's in the river and the lake. Right. It's, so it's soil that's literally running off our land. Yes. Into our waterways. Yeah. That is the number one water problem in America today. Number one water quality problem. It's scary, right? Yeah. And it's very it's, scary. And it's disturbing because we're in some of our best soils in yeah. Iowa, we're still yeah. losing 50 tons to the acre. 50, 50 tons to yes. the acre. Yes. Yes. 50 tons. And so, to see, to get a perspective... A dime, the thickness of a dime, yes. that's three to five tons. Wow. So sometimes you can't see it. It's very subtle. Right. And but over time. Oh, it's huge. Over, and you've seen some areas of farming here in the U.S. where literally feet of soil yes. are gone. Yes. Literally feet. Yes. Now, we have a question that's just come in. Here we are. Um, got a question here that says, do farmers, and this is from... Sharon Bates, do farmers farming the conventional way need to pay off debts to big companies before they can switch over to earth-friendly methods of farming? Wow, that's a that's very a, insightful question. Right? She's really listening. Oh, Thank absolutely. you, Sharon, for your question. Oh, that's an yeah. amazing question. Yeah. What happens is, through the years we've been taught, when I went to school, I was taught that we had to control and force nature because we were battling against it. We had weeds and it was a struggle. Yeah. We were taught the chemical, physical paradigm. Just beat it into submission. Beat it into submission. Man versus 
nature, right? Absolutely. Manifest destiny. Absolutely. Right? It, it, it's, it, uh, my friend uh, Gabe Brown says, I used to get up every morning to see what I had to kill. Yeah. Now I get up every morning to see what I can bring alive. That's, that's, a, that's a big paradigm shift, isn't oh, it? Oh, and now we're teaching, no, nurture it, right. love it, yeah. understand it. Yes. And so back to the question, uh, what we do is we start with producers where they're at. Yeah. Some of them are still using a lot of fertilizer and chemicals, and, they're, and, and what happens is they start realizing it's not working anymore. Mm. And so when they come to our workshop and field days and goes, oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm working against it. Yeah. And so what we do slowly is like any crack uh, victim or any uh, alcoholic, mm. you do it slowly mm. and mm. we wean them. And let me give you an example. Just yeah. going to no-till. Yeah. No, no till. No till. Is, who are listening. Let me explain that. We, yeah. we use so a planter back. where you do not disturb the soil at all. So you're not plowing the soil. No. You're not digging it's, the soil up. You're not disking it. You're, you're not, not working it. You're not invading Mother Nature. Absolutely. Right? You're not doing this invasive practice, one of right. the most destructive. You're so like it, minor. It's like, it's like uh, minor injections. You know, it's like Chinese therapy. Little, little t- tiny pin- pinpricks to put the seeds in. Right? Absolutely. It's like yeah. a, I, I kind of imagine like a pizza cutter yes it's really sharp blades drop the seed it works beautiful mm-hmm. and then it comes up but just that one practice farmers save 66 percent of their fuel wow. right away wow so i think people misunderstand they think well i got to do all these practices before i can get myself free from this other stuff mm. that's not necessarily true i see and we see such quick responses, but no till is one of them. Yeah. 66% reduction in fuel costs. So, so it's not that they have to pay off big debts. It's that they can start saving money right away, Yes, which will help them pay down the big debt that they already have. And see, most farmers farm with the bank. They have to borrow the money because they have to yeah. use huge amounts of money yes. to buy the seed, the fertilizer, yes. and all those inputs. It's like filmmaking. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. It's a lot of truth that you yeah. have to borrow. A majority of farmers yes. borrow from the bank. Right. Very few farmers farm from their own cash reserves. And I think that's interesting because we have the impression that farming is a white welfare system. Yes. That the, and, and look, there are subsidies yes. that do keep farmers doing what they're doing, but it's part of a much more complex system, right? Yes. I think... I think what the reason it started a long time ago, I think people in the Dust Bowl, they a lot of people went hungry. And I think a lot of these conservation programs or these subsidies started back then. And it's been very difficult to wean our farmers off those. So when you start going into these soil health systems, mm. the beauty about it, I call it freedom farming. Yes. You get freedom from the government, freedom from the chemical companies, mm. freedom this revolution has the ability, yes. Josh, to bring small communities back. So the money doesn't go to the chemical companies. Mm. It goes back to the local community mm. and back to the farmer mm. where it should be. Right, right. So, so here's I have a saying. Yes. If you want to make money, if you want to make money, mimic nature. Mm. If you want to go broke, mimic your neighbor. Because if your neighbor's not farming like nature is, you will go broke. Well, and, and, and farmers are growing broke. They're going broke in record numbers yes. in the United States, which should be scary to most people. It really should, because these are the guys the, and the gals that are responsible for growing our food. Are they yes. not? Well, Josh, just recently, 2016, the Center of Disease said farming occupation and ranching had the top highest suicide rate of the 30 top careers. There you go, folks. Big ad to get into farming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Top suicide rate in the country. Yeah. Come out to Oklahoma here, Axe City, and start farming. Oh, remember the farmer we saw yesterday, Josh? Yes. You remember that, and he's 79 years old or less? What did he say? You asked him, I think it was your Gabe, he said, yeah. would you encourage your kids to come farm? Yeah. What did he say? No. no and, not his kids, not his grandkids, just no. And he used some quite interesting verbiage when he yeah. said that didn't he, <laughs> he used some language he yeah did. he said heck no i wouldn't yes. encourage yes. my no yeah expletive no right no way yeah because yeah. my he says why would i want that right like i'm not making any money yeah yeah and so we have a question here from cheryl jonesworth cheryl says uh we need to hook you up with the corn growers <laughs> in kansas yes. now here's an interesting question 
Farmers are going to listen to this and, and they'll say, or people in the city, and they'll say, well, we can't change what we're growing. We still have to grow all this corn and feed it, to, you know, cattle and do all this stuff. But you're saying, you're, I didn't hear you say stop growing corn. I heard you say stop tilling. I, are they mutually exclusive? Do we need to change everything we're growing? Well, I think we need to go to more diversity. Mm-hmm. I think farmers are not making money because we keep growing huge amounts of monocultures yes. and we're good at it. Yes. We're so good at it yeah. that it deflates the prices and depresses the farm ec- economics. So, yes, we're saying change the what you grow. Mm. Keep growing. Yep. Sh- don't grow the same thing over and over. Nature doesn't grow the same things over and right. over. Yep. We're telling farmers, do the same. Start integrating animals. Start changing the what you grow. And if everybody would go diverse, let's say those millions of acres you just talked about, yes. if they all went to diversity, mm-hmm. the prices would go up. Right. Because people forget yes. the rest of the world's going corn and soybean. Yeah. Yeah. And so farmers, in a way, are their own worst enemies. Absolutely. Because the lower the price, the more they have to grow. And the more they have to grow, the lower the price. Yes. It's a vicious cycle. Vicious. Vicious. Yep. And this is overproduction is this sort of the the secret sauce that keeps them getting pushed off the land. And then there's corporate America but, saying... But, you know, but here's the thing, and, and I, I want you to speak to this. I want you to finish your, what your thought is about corporate America. I don't want to eat... I don't want to eat cheap bulk commodities from the middle of America. Right. Funneled into a bag, a box, or a carton yes. and sold to me at a big markup. And this is the distinction. The farmer is getting a tiny percentage of that box. 14 cents on a dollar. So 14 cents on a dollar. The majority of the markup is from the packaging, the pretty pictures, yes. the advertising. You know, there are people making money from food. Oh, yes. But it's not generally the people that, that we've been meeting out here in the middle of Oklahoma. Now, the, what we call cheap food is not cheap. Yeah. We have been paying a huge price. Yeah. It's just hidden through commodities and through conservation mm. Mm. programs and billions and billions of dollars. Mm. We've lost a lot of our soil. We're yeah. losing our health. See, the, the health system and the agriculture system are mirror image of each other. Mm. Pushing prescription chemicals and not solving the problem. Yeah. And they're almost the same. They're yeah. a mirror image of each other. Yeah. And, and we wonder why we're sick. We have corn syrup and sugars and these things and these cheap food, mm. and it's hurting our health. Yeah. So it's they're intimately combined, mm. and the soils are so nutrient depleted yes. that our bodies are not picking it up. Right. So it's sort of a situation is as above, so below. Yes. Right? As our soil health goes, so too do, does our gut health, our human health, and ultimately the health of our planet, the place where we live, all interrelated. Yes, yeah. everything is one. Everything Everything's is. connected. You know, amen, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what ecology teaches. Yeah, yeah, and that's, so, yeah. So, Ray, the, the revolution, if, if you could wave the magic Ray wand and, and cast a great spell over our land, what would the revolution, paint me a picture of a better tomorrow according to the principles of regenerative agriculture, because that or agroecology, these words yeah. were new words for a lot of folks. What would that look like? How would that how would that change the world? You know, the first that part of that that agtopia you're just telling me about mm-hmm. would be the first thing. It would be a people that have a different heart and mind. That they look at the soil and the planet and they realize they're part of it. They're connected to it. And they have this relationship with it. That's what I would see. Something that they understand. Yeah. Years ago, a couple of two or three years ago, we had this incredible meeting. We had the billionaire Buffett and all these people, the very important people. We met in Missouri. And at the end of Buffett the con- came out. Oh, Buffett was huge. I mean, very high government officials. Okay. It was, so power players. Power players were there. Some might even say one percenters oh yeah it was okay high rollers high rollers high government officials yes. yeah. we had researchers we had everybody we were talking about soil and health. they came to see you no it was all of us we were grouping there to talk about cover crops and okay. we we're talking about soil health yes and i'll never forget the last statement by 
one of the research, I mean, the person that was leading the meeting mm. and ending the day of the meeting. Mm. And he says, we want, our goal mm. is to have 20 million acres covered with cover crops by the year 20 something. Okay. I shook my head and said, no, I want 20 million minds that understand. Mm. See, if we get people to understand how important the soil is, yes. that we're connected to it. Mm. In fact, the word human is derivative from the word humus. Yes. And so I, I often feel like a pile of dirt. At me the too. <laughs> I call humans dirt on legs. <laughs> dirt on legs. Right? Dirt. We're just dirt on legs. There but see, if we understand yes. this mm -hmm. and if we embrace that mm. and we have that passion, we mm. will change the world. Mm. We will restore a lot of our resource issues. Yeah. In fact, I made statements before. Name me one thing resource wise. Mm. We don't fix if we don't fix the soil mm. and people saying, Water quality, no, we fixed that. Yeah. Economics, we fixed that. Yeah. I said, name me one. Right. Claim it, we fixed that. Name me one thing. Right. It's it's really the underlying resource of civilization as we know it. It's the it? foundation. The foundation of our civilization. Now, Donaga uh, Markegaard, um, Donaga is also profiled in the upcoming Kiss the Ground movie and oh. Kiss the Ground book. Donaga has a new book coming out, Dawn Again. Mm -hmm. I got to read a preview copy. Highly recommended for everyone. It premieres. That book comes out this week. Pre-order your copy now. Donaga writes in with a question. What does Monsanto think about all of this? Good it's, question. It's interesting. I've seen that Monsanto is trying to get a biological and start selling biological products. Mm. So I, I don't know what they think. They... Um, it's interesting, but um, once our farmers start realizing that we got to understand that poor farming practices created these companies. Mm. We created these companies by our four poor farming practices and mm. a lack of understanding. Yes. They filled that niche, see. But once we realize, I, I tell farmers, if you farm in nature's image, it helps control its own insects pressures. Mm. Do you know that there's for every one pest insect, there's 1,700 beneficials? Mm. We can control a lot of our pests, a lot of our pathogens, a lot of our weed issues. Yes. It's just by the way we farm. See, that's that's the way I feel about U.S. government. I think for every one bad government leader, there are 1,700 great citizens. Yes, yes. That's a good way of putting it. I think... I, I'm joking a little bit with you. I, well, <laughs> I'm I, pushing I, your buttons, but... It is the same in analogy, isn't it? Well, I think you have a great point. I think mm. one of the things that I, the reason I let, left the government was we have a lot of well-intended people. Yeah. We have very few leaders. Yeah. We have a lot of managers. Yeah. Managers is about power, mm. controlling budgets, mm. controlling people, controlling that, but it's not about real leadership. Yeah. So I, I see that other people are trying to take over this soil health name and mm. say, look at us, we're... We care about the planet too. We, yeah. Yeah. but in the reality, some of the things we do is very intrusive. Yeah, chemicals, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, mm. and tillage side. Right, those are all harmful. Yeah, and if they're not done properly. Now, I I know you have to go, and and you you're yeah. very generous here. You just uh, you have 25 people waiting to say goodbye to you after spending this intensive three days with yeah. you. You have opened their minds to a new world. Um, you've shown them things about the soil that probably most people would never know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think all of these practices, you know, we see how destructive they are. But from what I understand, your position is not never do them. Your position is that used judiciously, these are tools. Yes. You overused, they destroy the fundamental resource of civilization. Absolutely. I see, Josh, and thank you for that comment, Josh. I, that's what agroecology is. Agroecology, I think, is a bridge into the future, mm. into organic and permaculture. Yeah. You've got to remember, we've got millions of acres. We have farmers that are farming thousands of acres. What is that bridge to bring them into more of an ecological world? Right. We don't, we don't want to get rid of our farmers. No, because... We, we need our farmers. So it yeah. has to be done judiciously, mm. slowly. Mm. What I love about agroecology... But, but a revolution, Ray, is fast. Yes. So... Well, it is... Where it is, are we going? Well, here's the thing about what agroecology teaches. Mm. What I love is 
humans get involved in two things. Yes. Process yes. and tools. Yes. They have a love affair with tools. Cows are tools. No-till drill is a tool. Mm. Chemicals are tools or process. Let's mm. write up a conservation plan. Let's do a water nutrient plan. Those are process and those are tools, but they never were the goal. Mm. Mm. They're important. The goal is to illuminate the mind and the heart and change it yeah. so that it sees it differently. So agroecology, funda- the foundation part of it is mm. wean yourself of these costly uh, inputs mm-hmm. and they're finite mm-hmm. and they're expensive mm-hmm. so what I'm teaching farmers so I can reach a large group I says let's wean ourselves off that so you make more money and you keep the kids on the farm and ranch and you bring them back yeah that's what this is about yeah so, so I think that's a bridge I think it is too and, and, and from what I understand you're really what you want is a revolution in human consciousness yes and and from there the actions follow Absolutely, Josh. All right. You got it. Great. God bless you, Ray. Thanks Thank for being you. on the show. I appreciate Good you. Good to see you as always. Can't wait for folks to read about you in the Kiss the Ground book, see you in the Kiss the Ground movie. And we've got people chiming in. They're coming to your next workshop and their next workshop. <laughs> <laughs> You're a busy man. Your schedule's booked. Thanks for being on. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, appreciate you. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Okay. This is Josh DeKell. We're reporting live <laughs> from Elk City, Oklahoma today. Elk City, Oklahoma. The capital of what was once called the Dust Bowl of the Midwest. And uh, those of you who are familiar with the Dust Bowl, a terrible and long engagement with the destruction of our soils. I was trying to put a little picture up on the screen of something new there. Um, Jennifer writes in, are there, are there companies, big or small, that are behind this so that we can support them and help this movement flourish? Jennifer Herbig. Thank you, Jennifer, for your question. Perfect timing as we have our next guest on the show is actually not a company but an NGO. And uh, that is one of, the, one of the many organizations that you can support. So, yes, there are people engaged in this, and they are phenomenal people. I want to introduce one of them right now. We have Finian Make Peace. Finian is with The Kiss the Ground organization. Hi, Josh. How are you? Great. How are you, Finian? Super good. Thanks for being on. Totally. It's great to be um, here. Your organization, Kiss the Ground, you are really the inspiration in many ways for me writing the Kiss the Ground book, certainly taking uh, what's going to end up being half a decade out of my life <laughs> to make this movie. Um, but you and, and Ryland, and I want you to tell me a little bit about the story, you guys formed an organization what is, what is the mission of Kiss the Ground for folks at home? And especially for Jennifer, who just asked the question, who can she support? The mission of Kiss the Ground is really to inspire and advocate for the restoration or the regeneration of soil. And that's on a global scale. And especially uh, how we as a whole, consumers, policymakers, uh, business owners, and farmers can all work together to change, to regenerative system so that we're regenerating as opposed to degenerating or even sustaining our planet. Mm. Great. So basically you want to save the soil. We want to not just save the soil. We Mm. want to help rebuild the soil. Rebuild. And I think that's a point that a lot of people miss because we're we're used to trying to save the whales or save the ice caps from melting, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, save whatever, save yeah. money, uh, save coupon. We're used to saving things. Yeah, We're save water. Save it's, water, yeah, exactly. It's a mentality. I mean, I right. think it's a mentality that, if you think about it, yeah. makes so much sense. Because yeah. for most of human history since agriculture, we've watched as our interactions when we're trying to get our needs met, mm. whether it's our fiber for our clothes or the mm. food we're eating, mm. we've watched as that's made, made a detriment on the land. It's, Degenerative. It's yeah. degenerated our land. So, so degenerative yeah. is is destroying or taking away. Yeah, right? exactly. So we've Reducing. seen that that as we've interacted yeah. with nature to, to provide our needs, we've yeah. seen things decline. Right. And then, so the logical thing is to say, oh my gosh, we're going to run out. We got to start saving, mm. doing less harm, mm. sustaining. So that that right. concept is very logical. Right. A it, reaction. But it's it's hard to sustain when your population is growing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> because even if everybody saves a little bit, yeah. then you add 2 billion more people. Exactly. And you're not really doing yeah. that much saving. You're actually spending. 
exactly. right? More. So, so sustainability, new, yeah. Yeah, so, that's, so we sort of have version 1.0, mm -hmm. and that's taking away the resource, right? Yeah. Whatever it is. Iron, nickel, Extraction, copper, yeah, just general copper, extraction. Fossil fuels, yeah. coal, whatever, right? And then we came out with this version 2.0 idea. It kind of okay. started in the 60s, 70s. Conservation, yeah. sustainability. Yeah. yeah, people dropped a little you-know-what, had a little realization. Oh, my gosh, the planet's not doing so well. We're going to add a lot Finite more people. Finite resource, all going to run out. Yeah. Oops, you know, mm -hmm. modern economics based on Adam Smith. Oh, mm -hmm. my God, it was a lie. Now they want to sustain. But now you're version 3.0, right? Yeah, I think we, this, yeah, this we. collective movement, right. is really ushering in a different view. It's mm -hmm. kind of like... I call sustainability the the B conversation or the A part of the A conversation. Yes. Degenerative was our assumption of right. how it works. Yeah, that sustainability was a caveman. Is a, yeah, sustainability <laughs> like, is like the reaction oh. <laughs> right. to it. Oh my yeah. gosh. Right. That's in the A conversation. Yeah. The B conversation over here is it's a different entire different conversation. It's yeah. not just like one, two, three. It's like one and two mm. over here, and then it's like, oh, three. This it's, is yeah, it's really it's, it's a an, different idea, different way of thinking. It's an yeah. exponential way of thinking, mm -hmm. and and really the the point that I think is so important is we're, we're headed toward ten nine point seven billion people. UN says by twenty fifty, right? Yeah. And and they actually made that number quite a bit larger. I remember when twenty fifty was going to be mm -hmm. eight point five mm -hmm. billion mm -hmm. people. So the rate of acceleration of population increase is itself accelerating. Right. Now. So we do that, right? Now, the traditional way of living for all of human civilization was Finian has a little tribe over there by the river. I have a little tribe up here on the hill. Mm -hmm. I kind of degrade my hill, my resource. I see you've got nice fish. You've got uh, nice cows and maybe a better view. So, But we have big rocks and, and bows and arrows. Josh so we, and his rocks. Josh yeah. And, yeah, so we come and we take yeah. your river spot. Mm -hmm. We bonk you over the head and we just kind of – control that right yeah and uh, and to be fair there yeah. there were many many nomadic uh, tribes and places that they did have recognition and again yeah. like yes the dominant cultures that ended up taking over right were the ones who were like why don't we just take over them but there right. there were intermittently there are these tribes and things that have been saying oh we can use only this amount and then we'll leave and then we'll rebound but right no, I'm not yeah. saying all traditional, yeah. but but yes, you know, general, globally, globally, human civilization yeah. has been a win-lose paradigm yeah. up to now. Yeah. But once we get 9.7 billion humans, yeah, we have no more no more win-lose to play. We have to. We got to create win. a new paradigm, yeah, right? Exactly. So, do you th you know regenerative is a way of doing agriculture that regenerates what? Well, I, it's a great question, Josh, because when you when you speak about regenerative without looking at the universe that is soil and i say that because when we talk about healthy soil when mm. we have a healthy soil system uh you know when we talk about a handful of healthy soil has far more uh, organisms than there are people that have ever lived on planet earth not just our current seven to eight billion people we're talking about any person that's ever lived in, in a one, handful in one handful in a teaspoon it's about the people who've lived wow. right now so yeah. When we look at it that way, we're saying mm. if life has a trajectory, everything in life is constantly trying to regenerate itself. Yep. That's why, you know, sexual, we, we have sex things, populations increase. That's what happens. I, it, even that the smallest minutia that of the That is why skin, we have sex. Thank yes, you very much. Yes, don't forget. But yes. And <laughs> so, speaking as, as somebody who's going to be a father yeah, that's soon. that's right. I'm going to be a father You soon. are yeah. regenerating your DNA, are you Ex not? Exactly. Yes. So the human population is doing that right now. Big yes. population boom. But yes. Generally, when we look at life, everything in life is is regenerating. You take mm. a a tree with a seed; it mm. uh, becomes a million seeds, and then it becomes a forest. Like the one can become more and more. So, when I try to get this message across, when we're thinking sustainably in farming, we're mm. saying, "Here's our resource. Here's our finite resource that yes. we've been given yeah. from our father, or grandfather, or whatever. Yeah. And now we're going to try to maintain this as much as we can." Mm. And oftentimes, as you know, folks like guys like Alan Williams just talked about to here at this course, is we have farms that are farming subsoil because before they got on that land, these farmers had farmers previous who depleted the soil. Now, I mean, subsoil is the soil under, under the topsoil. Under so, so the topsoil we know is part gone. of the topsoil is that O horizon, that organic matter, the yeah. life, the billions of microbes that are mm. in there. They mm. live in that. They like to live in that topsoil because yeah. it has the most nutrients for them has the most aggregates, all this water capacity. Mm. But when we talk about farming subsoil, that's that, that soil that barely has any of organic matter in it, and that's what we've been trying to farm. So 
what I'm trying to get so is we've blown through the most critical soil. And how long before we figured out, you know, now Ray Archuleta says we can grow soil, which yeah, is exciting. That's what exactly what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so what I'm what I'm saying is when we're in the sustainability mindset, yes. we're trying to maintain the fractions left that we have of organic matter that that life is trying to accumulate. Mm. Life is naturally trying to build itself up. Yes. And the way we farm is constantly de- continuously taking that away. So life's saying, hey, can I can I rebuild this? Can I repopulate this with all the organisms in the soil that make up healthy soil? Yes. And we're saying, no, we're going to cut that down. We're going to we're going to reduce that with tilling, with chemicals, with leaving the soil bare, right? But what we're saying, what Ray's getting across to the world, and what these guys are saying is if you're helping the natural system, if you're helping the natural system, you can actually build soil back way faster than we used to claim in the science textbooks that it would take 500 to 1,000 years to build one centimeter of soil. They're right, like, right. no. When we get our system operating, when we get mm. the, the smallest life, the fungi and the bacteria yeah. fed through yes. the photosynthesis of the plant, mm. pumping the sugars into the ground, exuding yeah. those sugars, feeding those organisms, they are building soil. Their life and death cycles, along with the glues that they create, are literally building soil. So if we help that system function, mm. we are regenerating. We are building back soil as we farm, thus regenerative agriculture. Right. Not sustainable, yeah. not some other name. It's regenerative because we are regenerating soil and Mm. that's what the concept is we're saying wow this is possible it's being done Mm. and that's what's so amazing about these workshops like this this week is we're seeing some of the best of the best who say it's not only a little bit possible it's amazing the potential is unlimited Mm. i mean gabe brown is is one of the best in terms of his accumulations of organic matter and his building up of healthy soil yes and he's saying i don't even think i'm close to how good this can get that's remarkable that's remarkable that the best is saying i don't even think i'm breaking the surface with how big this potential is mm. so uh, I, so what i want to do is i want to continue this conversation this is this is we'll put a pin in this great. and and i want finney and make peace i want you back on the show okay because really this is a much larger conversation definitely biggest like, conversation there is right when yeah. you're talking about rebuilding the fundamental resource of our civilization all civilizations yeah all civilizations the way we grow food the way we store water the way we nourish ourselves potentially the single most important aspect of maintaining climate balance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. locally regionally globally all of those very important that we can rebuild this what can average people do what can what can what can people out there listening on facebook listening on itunes they're they're driving in their car they're thinking god this sounds great i want to yeah, rebuild yeah. topsoil i don't i don't farm well, i think first they should get your book Right. You, you visited a lot of people while you're making the film. You visited a lot of these pioneers mm. and got some of their stories. And I think it's written amazingly. I think they should order the book because that book was one, has one of my favorite of the, of the vast amount of books that are out there. But another thing they can do is while you're driving, while you're doing this stuff, plug in your, your jack to your, your YouTube. Listen to some of these talks by Ray mm. or Alan Williams. Yeah. They're talking about something that if you get it, if you have that light bulb moment where you understand the potential of this, if you start to say mm. to your friends, do you know about this? We're talking revolution spread because of ideas. Yes. Ideas are the mechanism. Yes. This is an idea whose time has come. There's mm. no debate of that now. Mm. We just have to say how many people are out there disseminating it. And it's up to each person who's out there listening or anyone they know saying, give us, give this movement a little bit of your time and we promise you your mind will explode and you'll want to share this because we, we it's not only that that's good we need you we need you to get this idea so that you can tell people hey you know i'm not a soil geek and i, I don't come from i was a musician i was like this hit me like a ton of bricks and i said i can't not share this i have to so that's what i'm inviting people to do just give mm. it a little bit of time mm. dive in a little bit and start to say hey we can buy food we can we can support farmers by asking them if they're doing this and then figure out where you fit in right you know we have millions of skill sets out there that could h- help this movement figure out where you fit in but first just give yourself a little time to learn about it mm. education first yeah free the mind and yes. the rest will follow exactly okay good Finney. thank you for cool. being on the show thank you fantastic to see you as always next up is lauren tucker lauren is the executive director of the kiss the ground organization registered 501c3 nonprofit organization and you heard from Finney and what they do they aim to restore, not just save, but restore soils worldwide. Lauren, 
thanks for joining us on the show today. Good, good to see you in Elk City, Elk City, Oklahoma. Here we are, right? Yeah, it's really great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to start off with an, uh, with an obvious observation, okay? And, 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 and I think we, we shouldn't be shy about talking about this. It's an important issue, right? You are a woman. This is true. It is true, right? <laughs> now, now, Great observation. Yeah, thank you. I am, I am incredibly astute. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Now, even in a class of regenerative farmers, these are guys who are like on the cutting edge of agriculture. You know, they, their minds are open, right? 25 folks. How many women were in the room? Uh, there was two of us. Two yeah. of you. Okay. And, and how many women were not engaged or, or ready to be married to a farmer? <laughs> that would be me. That would be <laughs> one of you. Yeah. One of you. So just, just from your personal perspective, and I do want to talk about you know, more important soil issues, but I think having the female perspective, having the divine feminine as part of the conversation of how we heal our planet is pretty important. What do you think's missing? Why don't we see more women engaging in all aspects of agriculture? Mm. I know I put you on the spot with that one, huh? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, a lot of things here. I think uh, when you look worldwide, we have more female farmers than we do male. <sighs> Thank goodness. Um, that and is then good news. <laughs> <laughs> when I we needed some good news today. Yeah. yeah. And then when we look at Ray and Gabe's uh, course that we just went through for three days, um, they are teaching a lot of ecological principles, mm. which we could argue are a little more intuitive for females. Mm. So the population that they're drawing to their courses might be people who are needing to hear a certain message. Um, I.e. people who <laughs> don't have a womb. They are not womb men. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I see that uh, ecology and understanding cycles and systems and looking at things as a whole and nurturing, um, not in every case, but... Um, are kind of, for the most part, more intuitive for females. Yeah. 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 So it, I'm enthused to hear we have more women farmers globally uh, in the U.S. Don't I quote me on that, but well, I think so. Well, <laughs> okay, I won't quote you on that. But, but we have significantly, potentially, the, per, per, uh, the percentage is much higher globally, which is good. The U.S. still seems a little lacking to me, especially here in Oklahoma. Yeah, I think what we've done in the U.S. is um, we've taken a lot of the joy out of farming. We've um, It's hard. People mm -hmm. are really suffering with mm. loans and high costs and degraded land. Mm. Um, and so it's a hard profession. Mm. It's a profession, I think, that used to be a lot more about the family and more homesteading. Yeah. Um, and now... You know, we have a brave few people who are engaging in this profession in this country right now. Mm. And I think that a lot of the regenerative agriculture movement is about re-engaging many people yeah. in land. Yeah. Because where we used to have, you know, 80 to 90 percent of humans were farming, mm. now we have in the U.S., I think it's something like 2 percent of our population are farmers. Yeah. So we've just taken people off land. Yeah, we really have. And, and it's shocking when you look at the numbers. You know, I was... I was just reviewing the numbers the other day. 915 million acres of production agriculture in the U.S. Uh, only about a third of that is dedicated to crops. Of the land dedicated to crops, less than 2% to pulses and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Meaning the vast majority of what we're growing is corn, soy, hay, wheat, those same things. You know, that's really the ecological footprint of our civilization. So... I'm excited that you are part of the charge, not just to diversify our food, but diversify the people who are making it. What did you get out of the course? Uh, so much. Um, yeah, when I, when I first found soil and regenerative agriculture about five years ago, my entry point was through nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to study nutrition. I was looking at what to get a master's in, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find a nutrition school that I really felt spoke to what I intuitively knew about nutrition or what I was reading kind of on the fringes. Mm. And then I discovered soil health mm. and kind of had the aha of 
we're only as healthy as our soil. Mm. Um, and so for me, it's been this, this deep dive into regenerative ag and soil health, but it, it came from an environmental background. So to back up, I've always been an environmentalist, engaged in nonprofits, trying to figure out what to do um, to save our planet. Yeah. yeah, save the planet. Yeah, yeah. Save the world, um, save, I, the, save everything. Now right? I don't even resonate with those words anymore. But yeah. um, I never, ever thought I'd want to be a farmer, but now I do. It's, you want to be a farmer? A 100% what I want to do. Really? So for me, what I got out of this course wow. was more training. Yeah. Um, and now my next step is, is going and interning on a farm. Um, but another thing I got out of this course was just seeing how hard the psychological barriers are to trying something new. Mm. You know, farmers have so much at, at stake. A lot of them are not even farming on cash. Every year you're borrowing from the bank in order to farm. Right. Yeah. And to try something new when you have really thin margins is super scary. Uh, so something that I really got out of this course, speaking to farmers and seeing who was in the class, mm. um, was that we have to build communities around this to support each other yeah. in trying something new yeah. and, and changing our system. Yeah, yeah. so great. So, uh, and, and we just got a comment here from Donaga Markegaard writing in again. Thank you, Donaga, for, for watching the show. Um, she says, women are there, but they are behind the scenes, especially where you are right now. And yeah. I assume she means in the middle of the country with smack dab in the middle of the United States, broadcasting totally. live from Elk City, Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm so I'm really glad that she said that because I was thinking, you know, none of these people are doing it alone. Most of them have a, a female that they're, they're doing it with. Yeah, right. And about uh, about two million registered farms in the United States, uh, about a million of them hobby farms, small, you know, less than 10 acres, about a million large scale, average size, 2,500 acres. The man is almost always listed as the farmer. Isn't that interesting? Even though, of course, we know who's really doing much, if not sometimes most of the work. Um, so you you now see yourself farming. Yeah. Yeah. What? Tell me your vision. If you could have your magical, you know, farm, what would it look like? Would it be big? Would it be small? Would it be, uh, you know, would you have animals? Would you do strawberries where would you be what would what would what would that look like for you lauren yeah so first i think i have a couple of years to go working with other farmers mm -hmm. um in mentorship yeah it's and okay to dream though you yeah, know right yeah yeah but eventually um something else i'm really passionate about are communities mm -hmm. um so i have a child my son just turned eight mm -hmm. and i realize as a parent you know this whole single family home thing just isn't working for us mm. we really i think as humans are meant to live in community mm -hmm. meant to support each other to to live in more tribal form yeah. so um i've lived in a lot of communities i live in california it's right. maybe a hippie thing <laughs> but <laughs> what i envision in the future mm. is building a piece of land with a lot of people mm. um and having that be a diverse community yeah. you know young to very old diverse backgrounds mm. Um, diverse cultures and and experimenting and, and living as tribes again and then I can see I can see it's already happening all, the, all over the world people are starting to to go back to this lifestyle mm -hmm. and yeah so when I envision farming I envision doing it with a lot of other people yeah. well, I mean from a practical standpoint you share the risk with others you yeah. know and I, I think when I when we're out here. Or the joy. <laughs> or the joy, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah, of course. We're sort of, I'm, still in the, I'm still in the aftershock of being out in the field yesterday in the middle of, you know, we were, Gabe and Ray, we wanted to get them out in a field of, of really bad, degraded field, just yeah. of dirt, to have them describe what they saw from their perspective. So we go out in this field of dirt, right? And, uh, and, and Gabe says, well, I'm afraid, you know, some farmers might shoot you for going on their field. And I was like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. Of course, you know, um, of course, you know, Gabe is a little wider than me. So I thought if somebody is shooting at us, I'm a skinny guy. They're probably more likely to hit Gabe than to hit me. So I, I, I thought it was okay. But sure enough, there comes the farmer. We're not in the field for five minutes. He comes out there. And this poor old guy, you know, he's in his 70s. He's looking at his soil and he says, well, this soil's about wore out. I said, well, you know, we're filming this thing. It's called Kiss the Ground. He said, I wouldn't kiss this ground if you paid me. <laughs> you know? And, and so the mentality is just beat 
the earth into submission. And literally, the earth has submitted. It's, it's dust out here. And have we learned anything in 80 years since the Dust Bowl? So what's, you know, what's the big mission, in your opinion, of regenerative agriculture? We just have a couple minutes. We'll close it out here. Um, what's the big mission of regenerative agriculture? What, what do you want to see? What do you want to see happen? especially after these three days of being with some of the most incredible soil people. Yeah, I think there's a lot of work to be done in bridging communities. Um, so what we've done in farming is we have chemical ag and we have or organic ag. Mm -hmm. And actually, when we look at both systems, neither are working that well. So um, you're telling me that the Death Star and the Rebel Alliance both have major issues. Yeah, and, oh and actually, if we can combine knowledge and share knowledge across both communities... Mm. Um, and come together around innovating. Um, I think there's a lot we still don't know mm. because our systems are so heavily degraded. Yeah. There are tons of principles that we can get started with to regenerate any piece of land, mm. but I actually think we might be so degenerated that we have no idea what a fully functioning ecosystem is. Mm. So I think there's a lot in coming together um, and in sharing knowledge and, and really putting aside all the differences mm -hmm. that we perceive. Mm. Um, there's a lot in yeah, being vulnerable to learn new things that are going to challenge all of our belief systems. But what I now know in my heart is that it's totally possible. You know, I never... I never thought it would be possible to get us out of this mess. I thought climate change was impending doom, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that was it. Humanity's wiped off this planet. Yeah. Because um, the Earth's going to be fine. Earth's going to be just fine. It's the humans that aren't going to survive. Mm. Um, yeah, I've heard that. I mean, people say that a lot now. You yeah. Know? That's yeah, the yeah. new thing. And the, the science is pretty scary. Yeah. Um, if you look at it. But I really see that it's possible, and I now know in my heart that it's possible mm -hmm. to regenerate land, and I think it's going to take a lot of reaching across the aisle, mm -hmm. a lot of listening, yep. a lot of, as Ray said, love. That's, yeah. that's how I ended the course today. He said, this is going to take a lot of love, and it, that really resonates for me. Mm -hmm. So a couple questions before we close it out. Um, Karen, yeah, Karen Lindquist just writes in, there's a lot of old farmers that want to get out but can't and young folks that want to get in but can't. It's scary stuff. But you're relatively young and you're willing to bring your son into this world and, and uh, into this world, I mean the world of farming specifically, the world of growing food. So you kind of answered this already, but hope or despair and why? Oh, I'm 100% hopeful. Yeah, and... um. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, hmm. You just told me the science is scary. Yeah, the science is super scary, but what I see are brave people, mm. innovative people, mm. loving people all over the world every single day that are doing something in their community. Um, and kind of to answer your point of you're about to jump into farming, that sounds scary, or mm. how do young people get into this? Yeah. Um, it again goes back to community and love. Mm. A lot of the way that I got into this was through community, and I will find opportunities to go and farm because of community. Yeah. And so it's really about reaching out um, to, to people around you and saying, hey, I need help with this, or mm. I don't really know what to do here. I don't know how to feed my family nutritious food. I don't know how to compost. I don't know how to grow a plant. Yeah. Um, and, and really holding each other because that's what we're going to need. Mm. And, you know, things might get a little worse in our in our environment for a while. But I, I really see that there are all these shining lights all over the world that are working really hard. Yeah. And we just need to join them and love them. It's great. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, and really, you know, if you can grow food, you can live. It's, you know, seeds are powerful. The The power of fertility, the power of humans to interact with nature and if you can do it sustainably that's okay but if you can do it regeneratively you can do it forever so that that is very hopeful how would you like to ask a question to everybody at home just any question any question really what you know what question would you like to would you like to to have people answer yeah um someone recently asked me this question and it's resonated 
And the question is, or the premise is, we, we have so many barriers. Mm. Oh, I have a day job, I have debt, I have this. There's no way that's possible in my community. It might be possible in yours, but not in mine. Mm. We have so many barriers. If you could take every barrier off the table. Time, money, spousal commitments, Anything, career. Whatever it is. Mortgage. I'm sure everyone has at least one. Yeah. Um, and the goal were regenerating the planet or engaging mm. in regeneration somehow. Mm. That's the goal. Yeah. And we're taking everything off the table. Yeah. What's the first thing you would do? Mm. What's the second thing you would do? And what's the third thing you would do? And then I dare you to do one of them. All right. So it's yeah. a challenge. Yeah, it's not, a just a, it's, not just a question. Sorry, it's yeah, a it's challenge. A challenge. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. From Elk City, Oklahoma, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Picture Show. Your host, Josh Tekel, talking about some very important issues today with members of the Kiss the Ground organization, the nonprofit, kisstheground.com. <laughs> kisstheground.com. You can donate, right? You can. Kisstheground.com. Also, the book, Kiss the Ground. Don't forget to pre order that on Amazon. Listen, I love you guys in Facebook land. I'm so glad you tuned in today. Tune again next week, Thursday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I guarantee you we will blow your minds. Thanks, everybody. Signing out from Elk City, Oklahoma. <laughs>